Mike Owens here, and today I'm joined by the Bone Crusher, my Congolese brother, Marty Casey, <laughs> who returns to action the 3rd of December against Michael Johnson. But Mark, always a pleasure. How are things with you today? Oh, great, man. Thank you for having me. Always so a pleasure. I've been busy. I've been busy, as usual, but uh, <laughs> we're here now. Yeah, we are. Let's talk about this Michael Johnson fight. Um, what I'd like to know, first and foremost, what was your first reaction when you got the name Michael Johnson handed to you? Uh, I actually called him out. Uh, yeah, I just think yeah, he when you when you what well if you go past Michael Johnson, there's a lot of doors open, and uh, I'm seeing where I'm at in my career. Uh, for it, may, it makes sense to fight someone like Michael Johnson, uh, moving forward, so I can get. I know I know if I want if when I beat him, I know I should be able to get a ranked opponent or even ranked top fifteen. So I'm trying to get to them ranking. So I'm just looking at the right fights where I can get to get me there where I want to be. How how much do you think Johnson's got left in the tank? I mean, he went on that Rosen streak. He's he's rebounded with the Alan Patrick win, and then had the controversial loss to Jamie Malarkey. How much do you think is left? Do you think he's got left in his career? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I, I think he's still talented. He's still he's still dangerous, uh, but he's like a, a gatekeeper. I mm. think we all know that you beat him, uh, you can start you know climbing up the ranks because it's not an easy fight for anybody. Look mm. at the names that he's beaten and there. Uh, I just thought, you know, why not? You know, I respect his style. He's a great fighter. He likes to bang. And uh, I think I want to test myself with people like that. So why not? Let's do it. People will talk about his hand speed. People will talk about his knockout power. But from your perspective, what's the what's the biggest danger in this fight? What does Michael Johnson do better than all the other opponents? Uh, better, again, that's, that's what everyone's saying. Yeah, hand speed, because that's why he's shown. Uh, he's striking. He's, he's very good with fast hands. Uh He's got, he's got a power, power, he's carried power, but I also carry power. I feel like if you watch my last two fights, I've wrestled pretty well. And uh, I just didn't show it before. Now I know I can wrestle anybody in UFC like that. But I'm not looking to wrestle like that. I'm, I'm more, I feel like, you know, when he, when he fought Khabib, mm. but I'm a better striker. I feel mm. I can mix things. I think I'm much, much, much better a fighter than the, the way Khabib fought him. I, I mix things up a lot different. So, I'm just looking forward to testing my skills, not thinking, oh, uh, what he's going to do. No, I'm thinking of testing my skills, what I'm capable of, so how to neutralise him. Mm. I, I want to talk about this kind of transition you've got with this little bit more of a wrestling-based approach that you've had in the last couple of fights. And I remember me and you having a conversation and you said people always underestimate my wrestling ability. And what I want to yeah. know is this new wrestling, um, this kind of change that you've made, a little bit more wrestling-heavy approach, is it your wrestling skills improving or is it you focusing more on that as a as a tactic and as a goal? I'd say it's all round, really. Uh, I've been watching a lot of guys like uh, back in the day, John Jones, uh, GSP. I'm just trying to like mold everything together, trying to see what I'm good at. Like I know many fighters don't really like wrestling because it's, it's toxic in your body, it's taxing, you know, it's tiring. People don't like that. So my mindset now, if people don't like it, I'm trying to put them there to get them tired and then I can do what I want. So I have to really feel like you you don't want to be there with me because you think, oh, it's hard. You can't, I can't breathe. I can't do whatever. So for me, it's just more thinking, you know, get you to a point where you feel uncomfortable for me to be comfortable. Mm. Uh, you you seem to get a lot of uh, disrespect online. I, I often think so a lot of people seem to be calling these these last couple of wins boring. Uh, and I think it's because you've got you've had such an exciting style. There's such attack and uh, yeah. striking style. But when you've made yeah. this little bit of a transition, you're getting unfairly criticised for it. Do you agree with that? Uh, the thing is, I, I don't really care about criticise criticise no more because before, when, when I'm losing, everyone's like, oh, he's not all that. So now I'm winning, but like, oh, he's boring. If I'm doing anything, something else, they'll always have something to say, you know. Mm. I can't keep listening to that. To me, it's about my my personal uh, goals, see where I want to be, what I can do with my career, how I can dominate people. You know, I finish people. You, people can people know I can stand up, I can strike, you know, I can wrestle. People before they were saying I couldn't wrestle, but mm. now they've seen that I can wrestle. So it's about me going out there, literally just be free, show them what I'm capable of. Like I can wrestle, I can strike. Whatever I want to choose, what I want to show, I will show it. So it doesn't really matter to me what people think. How was the return to England for you? How was it being on that July show in London, having the, having the home advantage? It felt good, really good, you know. They expect me to put a show like crazy, flying kicks, you know, but now it's about 
getting the wins. You know, I've, I've been in the UFC for six years, you know, six years, something like that. So for me, I feel like I don't want to be stuck in somewhere not knowing if I'll ever be a champion or not. I'm trying to start climbing up the ranks and that's my main goal, you know, get the wins, start keep climbing up slowly and eventually we'll start against, uh, obviously get a, get a shot with the titles. I've got, I've got, I've got a goal. I'm not just there trying to fight now. It's mm. different, you know. I'm trying to get somewhere. So it's about building. I know I can finish, guys. I know I can stand up. The more I, people see my rest, like now, I have not heard nobody talk about uh, my striking. They all mm. think I'm a wrestler now. This one, I'm like, yo, this is pretty good. You know, I've got them where I want them. So, mm. yeah, I'm excited. You mentioned there about making your debut in 2016. I checked the record three weeks before your UFC debut. Michael Johnson had their uh, main events a fight night and knocks out Dustin Poirier in under ninety seconds. Is this a bit yeah. of like is this a special fight for you in terms of fighting someone with such an acclaimed record and such a, a standard in this lightweight division in Michael Johnson? It is, it is, yeah. Because you obviously you got you got to start climbing up the ranks. Uh, like when I beat Joe Duffy, that my, you know put my name out there, mm. Lando. I'm just trying to get names. You no know, names been there for a while, you know. Trying to start climbing up, knowing like people gotta know my name now, like you know where I'm at, and I can't keep, you know. I fought, I feel like I fought everybody. <laughs> if honest, I fought Fiziev, Dan Hooker, you know, yeah. and I fought them. What Dan Dan Hooker, I think was what four fight in my uh, uh UFC career. Yeah. So now I, I just you know it's about me. I'm just trying to build, man. I'm just literally it's about me right now. Hundred mm, percent. I want to talk very quickly about this move to. GB top team because if I understand correctly, you're undefeated at the with GB top team memory serves. Um, yeah. What what have those guys introduced into your game to to get you on this winning streak? Yo, what it is like, Brad Pickett. I trained I trained with him before at uh, uh ATT in America. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. I just like the way Brad is with me. Uh, it's not it's not yeah, it's not, it's not have ego. You can talk. To, you you feel like you can go to him and talk to him. And I feel that was something I was missing. A lot of coaches in UK, I feel like you have to like bow down to them, you know, do what is best. Say, I'm not, a, I'm not a type of guy. I like to be around, you know, go around, take different things. If a coach agrees, I'll take my coach, but they can't hold me down. I like mm-hmm. to go try things and bring it back to my where I want to, you know, where I want to train. And uh, Brad Pickett gave me that. Like for example, I've got another coach called Selman Berisha from uh, All Stars Gym. Mm-hmm. This Friday, I fly out to Vegas for the next two weeks. I'm going to work with him. And when we finish, we all come together. So I love Brad Pickett, Salman, and my boxing coaches. So we're all together. Instead of me just having, uh, no, I just have this one guy because he, he chose to have me. It's mm-hmm. not about that. It's about me getting those wins. And I feel like Brad Pickett, he cares enough for me to try to get his wins. And he knows what I need because he's been a fire himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. GB, GB suits me perfect because... Brad, can, Brad is a really good wrestler and is, is bringing things that Mike Brown told me back in the days. And he was he was training with Mike Brown for how many years? For a long, mm. long time. So I feel like he's adding more to my game and my striking all together. So I, I'm feeling complete and I feel like I'm in the right place with the right team because we're talking together. But if I, I could show my WhatsApp group, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Now I'm like, this is how I wanted it. It's more organized now than how I used to have it before, you know? Not knowing what I'm doing, just doing whatever. But now I'm more organized with the team. Everybody's got a goal for me to win. It's not just me thinking, oh, I've got to win now. I have yeah. people behind me putting the plans together. And mm. I feel that's, that's what I really needed. And uh, so GB Top Team is a perfect place for me to be. Like training is built around Mark Tia Casey rather than the Mark yeah. Tia Casey building around training. Yeah. Correct. I want to ask yeah. about uh, I want to ask about another guy who you've been training with in Nathaniel Woods, who, in a similar way to you, has gone on a very very nice run in 2022 with two more wins. Can I ask, do you and uh, Wood train together? And if so, what are those spars like? Because I think they would be yeah, he should come. It's pay per view. It's pretty good. Yeah, Nath is a cool guy, man. Uh, we've been training for quite a while now. What for? It's three camps, I think I've been there. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Uh, we're learning from learn learning from each other. Uh, and that's 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 what I need really. Be like just have people, uh, good spirit. Not if there's not egos, we're just there to get better. We all wanna we all wanna be US champion. We wanna learn. So for me, just having the right people in mind. And they, the other fighters that be helping me out as well. You know, mm. I've been to a few gyms before. Where, where you feel like other fighters, they feel like because you're there, 
they won't do any better. Where where I am now, I feel it's all a team. Like mm. if I win, they win. If it makes sense. Mm. What does a win with, over Michael Johnson do for you in your career? What is what does this unlock as the next the next step? If you like, it just unlocks the next door for me to get into ranks. Now you know I have a top fifteen. You know mm. I feel like I I, I fought number seven, number six. I don't always ranks at now Fizia, mm. but I fought Fizia. I fought them by all ranks. I'm looking at the ranks now. I'm like I should be in there. But for me to be in there, I had to beat somebody like Michael Johnson to prove that I belong there. So beating him, I can either get straight top 15 or fight somebody over there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Is a dominant decision enough in this fight or is a finish key? Is a finish key to getting that next step and then getting that ranked opponent to get there? Uh, you know, I don't really these days I don't really like trying to look to go trying to finish somebody. Whatever comes, comes. But when I'm in there, I'm trying to be dominant as possible. Like I'm trying to dominate the fight. I'll try to be the man there. So I'm not looking at trying to how I'm going to finish the fight, but I just know I'm going to be very, very dominant. Mm. Last question from me, Mark. I'll let you get out of here because I don't know if you know this. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you were the first fighter I ever met in person all those years, yeah. all those years back. <laughs> you were the first UFC fighter. I can remember the legs trembling. I can be really nervous to meet you. And then now we obviously, we're sitting here all that, all that time past and we're talking. Uh, yeah. but there was a there's a bit of a change in my life because I don't know if you remember, but I had quite long hair the first time we met for quite a number of months. Now I've got the shorter locks. What I'd like to know is which is the better haircut because you've got good hair, my friends. You know, I've got to ask you. <laughs> Mine's a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what yeah. haircut do you think? I th- I say short, short, short suits you better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well listen, Mark, it's always a pleasure yeah. to catch up. It's always Just a don't, don't have the fridge, don't do this. <laughs> listen Mark yeah. it's always a pleasure I know you're a very busy man so I'll let you get yeah. out of here but uh, safe, no flight, problem, safe flight to Vegas safe flight to Vegas uh, yeah. enjoy fight week on Orlando best of luck on the 3rd of December thank you brother I appreciate that